Hey, this is Jeff, and welcome back to my Fallout 3 challenge run to see how quickly I can get all skills to 100. Last time I was trying to finish the Wasteland Survival Guide to get the Survival Guru perk, and I ran into a little problem. I need Science 50 to reprogram the robots in the Robco facility, and even with the Vault Lab Coat, I'm nowhere near that. So I need to do some other things first. I could get the science bobblehead, but I want to speedrun them all at once if I can, and I'm not quite ready for that. I'm close to leveling up, and when I do, I'll take the daddy's boy perk for plus 5 medicine and plus 5 science. And I do need to do the quest those to get the ant sight perk for plus 1 perception, and you can also get Lesko's lab coat, which gives you plus 10 science, not permanent, just while you're wearing it. But that's good enough for the skill check at Robco, so we might as well do that now. You have got to be kidding me. Any other time, Brian would be interrupting you in the middle of something important, but when you want to talk to him, he's nowhere to be found. Guess we can walk up to Grey Ditch and see if he's there. Oh, okay, there he is. It's about time. Those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. I actually made a short video about Brian a couple months ago. I stumbled across a wasteland hunter attacking him for no apparent reason, and it took me a while to figure out what was going on. Belton can put a link to that one in the description if you're interested in seeing that. Which, if you find Brian as annoying as a lot of people do, you might. Dogmeat, stay here and I'll kite the nest guardians up to you. Fox? Something troubling you, my friend? You too. If you insist, but do be careful. I can hardly repay your kindness while waiting back here. Lesko doesn't give you the full reward if the queen is killed, so I can't let these guys get too close. But hopefully the nest guardians will follow me that far. There's one. Come on. You know you want me. Just follow me up the tunnel and you can fry me nice and crispy. You get the mutagen either way, but you only get Lesko's lab coat if the queen survives. It gives you plus 10 science, where the vault lab coat only gives you plus 5, so that'll be a big help at the Robco facility. Just a little further. Um, Fox? It's right there. Ow. No, you went. I got me mad. What? Ooh. I had to get hit to prove they were a threat? I win again. I guess shooting them on sight would have been too much like an assassination. All right, they're all dead and the queen is still alive. I had hoped you'd return. What now? Let's go. With all due haste. I'm ready for my mutagenic bioenhancer injection and lab coat, Doctor. How marvelous! Here is the promised lab coat. I'm certain you'll find it quite useful. Which injection did you want? Will it be the Ant Sight or Ant Might? I'm taking Ant Sight, which will also increase all three perception related skills by two. How marvelous! Ant Sight it is! Hold still, please. And now I just need the bobblehead to max out perception. Lesko's lab coat also has damage resistance 4, same as the tunnel snake outfit, plus rad resistance and the science buff. Uh, the only thing I lose is the melee weapons buff, which I don't use at all. I think this is going to be my full-time outfit. Oh yeah, we have a winner. It's amazing that people trust you enough not to attack me. Considering how mad scientist I look in this light, I'm amazed too. Anyway, the even better news is, I forgot the quest isn't actually complete until you find Brian a new home. But I already got the ant site, so he can wait. He'll be fine in Grey Ditch now that the ants are gone. Which means no XP, so I can get on with Oasis and take the daddy's boy perk when I level up from that. I can't lie, I'm kind of digging the mad scientist thing. <laughs> Super mutant henchmen and everything. There's something to be said for sitting on a throne, too. I could get into this. We welcome you with outstretched arms. Ah, Well, there go my delusions of grandeur. 
Sapling you is, of course, why I'm here. If you finish the quest in a way that makes her happy, she gives you her bear charm, which permanently increases your speech skill by 10. So let's get this show on the road. Tell me about your god. Oh, you mean Harold? He's really nice. Sometimes when I get really lonely, I go into the grove and talk to him. Sometimes I even curl up all cozy-like and sleep next to his roots after I have a bad dream. I tell him what I'm scared of, and he tells me what he's scared of. It makes me feel better knowing I'm not the only one. Oh, I cannot fail that speech challenge. I'll be back. I had to reload my autosave after talking to Harold because her dialogue only comes up once, even if you don't attempt the speech challenge. So be sure you have all of your speech buffs ready before you talk to her. And while I wanted to collect all the bobbleheads in a row, the speech bobblehead isn't far from here, so I think I'm going to go grab it. I need all the help I can get because not only is my speech skill not great, but in Fallout 3 your charisma also factors into speech challenges, and my charisma is only one. There's nowhere like this left in the world anymore, eh, Outsider? No, I don't suppose there is. Revel, Outsider. You are under his protection. I know this looks bad, but please don't be alarmed that the first place I go after meeting you people is Paradise Falls. Here's your 500 caps. I can go in now, right? Thank you. Pleasure doing business with you. Enjoy your visit to Paradise Falls. Friendly warning. Don't act like a jackass. You won't get a second chance. Depends on what you mean by acting like a jackass. I'm just here to grab a bobblehead, and despite it being displayed proudly on your boss's desk, it's not marked as stealing, so we shouldn't have any trouble at all. It's right here, and like I said, don't take anything else, but the bobblehead itself isn't marked as stealing. Speech skill permanently increased by 10 points. And we're out! I tell him what I'm scared of, and he tells me what he's scared of. It makes me feel better, knowing I'm not the only one. Well, that didn't help as much as I hoped. Tell me too, then I won't be scared either. Sorry, that's only for secrets between friends. Don't. Oh. Aw, oh, I never knew an outsider could be scared of anything. Harold told me that he's scared of fire. If fire ever got on him, it would burn him and Bob until they were all gone. That's why we keep the fires far away from him. There we go. I have to go now. May you remain under the canopy of his protection. I'm not generally a big fan of save spamming. Guest among us and quite welcome, outsider. But we have to get her quest reward, and the only way to get it is to convince her to tell you Harold's secret and then not use it against him. And the guy with the key isn't there because I've been pissing around. <laughs> Fox has glitched into the wall. Oh, and apparently Mirelarks can use doors. Okay, that was weird. Now, as long as you don't burn Harold to death, I don't think it matters which of the other options you pick. If you destroy his heart without using fire, Sapling you will be sad, but I think she still gives you the charm. But just to be safe, I'm going to apply Laurel's Liniment to accelerate Harold's growth, because that's what I usually pick, and I know you get the charm for that. So, it looks like you decided to do things their way, huh? How come? I'm not the killing type, which is particularly true in this run. No, I suppose you aren't. My mistake for making you do something you didn't want to do in the first place, I guess. I've got to go now. Come back and visit me sometime. And there's level eight. So now we're really on the clock to collect books and bobbleheads before we hit level nine get sneak up to 40, and put the rest in unarmed. And for the perk, uh, as I already mentioned, we're taking a rank of daddy's boy, for plus five to science and medicine. 
which along with Lesko's lab coat should just about get us enough to finish the Wasteland Survival Guide. But before we leave, don't forget to get our reward from Sapling U. Hey, my second best friend in the whole wide world. I hear you may have a gift for me? Yeah, I think you're pretty swell for someone from out there. And, and you were really nice to me too. I was gonna give this to my bestest friend, Harold, but he doesn't have pockets, the silly head. This is a charm that my parents gave me for my fifth birthday. It's really neat. Take it. Thanks. I have to go now. Goodbye, outsider. The bear charm is kind of weird. You don't wear it. You don't even have to keep it in your inventory. You just get a permanent plus 10 to speech when she gives it to you. So in that respect, it's a lot more like a bobblehead than something like Lesko's lab coat that gives you plus 10 science, but only while you're wearing it. And I never said this in the first episode when I was talking about the rules for this run, but the goal is to have all skills permanently 100 with no chems, no temporary effects, basically stark naked. And as you can see, the Pip-Boy icon for the charm looks like a necklace, but if you drop it, it looks like a teddy bear. And the plus 10 is permanent, even though I dropped it. But I'm going to take it because it's worth 50 caps. Yeah, I'd usually keep it for sentimental value, but in this run I can't afford to be sentimental. I was trying not to read any books until I had them all, just so I could double check the counts and make sure I didn't miss any. But after all that, my science skill is 46, so I need to read two science books before we head to Robco. And now it should be... 50. The plus sign means there's a temporary buff in effect, in this case, obviously, Lesko's lab coat. So now we're ready. If I can get out of my bedroom. Guys, come on. Vertibird. I thought I blew up the Enclave. <laughs> and a Bloatfly. You are the least of my worries right now. Fox has got him under control. And a mole rat. <laughs> and a robot. Oh, okay. Ah. Is there anybody else out here who wants to kill me? No? We good? And here's the Robco facility. Anybody can install Moira's widget, but reprogramming the robots afterwards requires Science 50. And like I said, we need to do all of her optional objectives to get the Survival Guru perk. Install the widget, and then immediately hack the terminal before the robots go hostile. There we go. Now, I don't think it matters which reprogramming options you actually pick, but... Cease total liquidation will make the robots friendly to you. You can also initiate pest extermination, which will make the robots hostile to the rad roaches. The mole rats are screwed either way, because they attack the robots even if you tell the robots not to attack them. And let's pick up all the skill books while we're passing through so we don't have to come back later. There's an energy book in this uh, little workshop area. A medicine book in one of the office cubicles, along with some meds. There's a science book right there in the control room off the factory floor. And there should be one more in the lobby. That's a pre-war book, not a skill book. There it is. Speech book. And now we're done. Back to Moira. Even after reprogramming, the robots were of questionable value as allies. Well, they're only human. Or, uh, well, uh, made by humans. Well, probably manufactured by other robots, but <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Oh, and take my book on science. For some reason, I just can't get into the computer parts. But I've got the rest pretty much memorized. And in the fastest print job ever, it's already done. 
Is the final product worth it? Oh, my. It's, it's brilliant. Even I'm astounded by my genius. Oh, no, no, no. It's more than that. By our genius. But now, the very first copy of our book goes to you. It wouldn't nearly be as good without your input. You're the real Wasteland Survival Guru. And there we go. It doesn't say so in the message, but we get six points each in science and medicine. Energy weapons should be 50 since we already got the bobblehead, and explosives and lockpick should be 40. Oh, right, because I don't have the perception bobblehead yet. And medicine and science are where they should be, so that confirms we did everything right with the Wasteland Survival Guide. Anyway, before I get confused again, let's go pick up the perception bobblehead. Right here on a shelf in the Museum of Dave. It's not marked as stealing, even though everything else around it is. Perception permanently increased by one. And I think that's true for all of the bobbleheads, taking them as never stealing, even if they're in a location that's owned by someone. Sorry, Flower, I'm not actually going to meet the president. I just wanted his bobblehead. See ya. That's the last special bobblehead I need, but we might as well go ahead and get the rest of the skill bobbleheads, since we got speech earlier. And yes, energy weapons is 50. Explosives and lockpick 40. Everything is as it should be, with perception at 10. We'll pick up the barter bobblehead in just a minute, but there's also a skill book in Evergreen Mills that's kind of tricky to get. That's the door to the bazaar, and the book is on the roof of the control room directly across from it. You need to jump down from the catwalk. There we go. And the book is in the corner. Duck and cover the explosives book. Now the bazaar. The bobblehead's back here in Smiling Jack's back room, behind the counter on this shelf. Approaching Fort Constantine from the west like this, we can oh. jump down from the cliff right behind the building uh, without fighting any of the robots. It's the, um, if I can get over there, the CO quarters. This is now a... There's a bunch of good loot in here. Um, if you look around. Uh, Nuka-Cola Quantum. Dog meat. Excuse me. That, no, oh, that's a pre-war book. I think there's a skill book in here somewhere, but what we really want is in the basement. Pre-war money. Well, that's not why we're here, but might as well take it to sell. And the bobbleheads in the safe. We already got energy weapons from Raven Rock, so next up is explosives. You don't actually have to turn on the beacon to find the bunker. You can just search around the base of the hill and find it. Explosives up by 10 points. And a stealth boy. Very nice. The lockpick bobblehead is amusingly right here where the raiders were obviously trying to crack this safe without much luck. Lockpick up by 10 points. And one of the raiders, the guy with the flamer, always has a big guns book in his loot. Have I mentioned how much I dislike the Dunwich building? Anyway, the melee weapons bobblehead is in the middle of the floor on the way out. And now we never have to come here again. Repair is right here on Evan King's kitchen table. Up by 10 points. And maybe someday I'll check on his neighbors, but right now I'm kind of busy. In the very back of this lab area on the shelf, the science bobblehead. And now we'll get out of here and head to another one of my least favorite dungeons, the National Guard Armory, for the Small Guns Bobblehead. You do not need the Keller family transcripts to get in here. They unlock the next door. But the Bobblehead's in this foyer area, uh, right here. We already got the speech Bobblehead from Paradise Falls, so next up is Sneak in the Yao Guai Tunnels. That is a lot easier if you have the Animal Friend perk, but obviously that wasn't an option for me. And now we just need Unarmed, which is in an unmarked location north of Girdershade that can be kind of tricky to find. 
It's almost due north of Girder Shade and due west of Smith Casey's Garage, and it's marked with a string of lights, so it shouldn't be that hard to find, but it's in one of these gullies, so you can't get line of sight on it until you're practically right on top of it. And it's easier in the dark because of the lights, so I really want to find it before the sun comes up. Was that it? Yes. Lights and penance, in fact. Anyway, Rockopolis. This is where Dashwood's friend Argyle died, and the bobblehead is right over here beside his body. Really There's the full collection. Except for the special bobbleheads. I only have the perception one of those so far. So, skill-wise, everything should be in the low 50s, and we should just need books to get them the rest of the way to 100. Science is 66, because I have Lesko's lab coat on. Well, Take that off just to see them in their natural state without any temporary buffs. Yep. Uh, 773 XP to the next level, which sounds like I have room to spare, but I'm probably going to get a few hundred XP for all the map markers I discover in the process, and I might have to pick some locks or hack some terminals. And don't forget to put the lab coat back on. Now we can start on the books. And to make it easier to keep track of, we'll do them in alphabetical order by location. Well, I'm not even out of the A's, and I already have a problem. One of the books is in this shack at the bottom of the bridge that Arafu sits on, but it's boarded up. The only way it unlocks is if you complete blood ties peacefully and convince Evan King to trade blood packs to Vance for protection, in which case Alan moves in there. So here comes a big heap of unavoidable XP. Well, there's the book. But at what cost? I only have 383 XP left to level 9, and I'm sure I'm going to discover more than 37 locations in the process of collecting the rest. I think I'm screwed. I should have hired you guys first and let you kill the mole rats for Dad. That's right, who's a good dog? In fact, let's have a look and see how many XP I could have avoided. 39 locations discovered. Most of those were unavoidable. Maybe I could have skirted around a few of them, but not many. I've only killed 20 creatures. I had to kill one rad roach to get out of Vault 101, and 10 mole rats for Moira to get the survival guru perk, so... If I hadn't killed the other 9, that would have saved maybe 90 XP, because it was all low-level stuff. Picked 4 locks. Anchorage Memorial for Moira. One to get in Evan King's house for the repair bobblehead. I wanted to get into Vault 106 Science Labs for a book, and a safe in the Anchorage Memorial for a book. Nothing optional there. I hacked two terminals. One was in the Super Duper Mart, one in the Robco facility. No choice on either of them. 18 mines disarmed. Well, only one of those I had to do for Moira. Uh, if I'd have skipped the rest, that's maybe another 85 XP saved. For speech challenges passed, I had to do McCready and Sapling U. Well, I know one was Bannon, which I could have skipped and gone straight to Vera, but I think that was an easy one, so it wouldn't have saved many XP, and I don't remember what the other one was, but even if it was skippable, I doubt it would have saved much either. So I got maybe 200 XP that I could have avoided, and I don't think that's enough. Um, in fact, I'm going to do some number crunching, and I'll be right back. Okay, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is, I'm an idiot. I went into excruciating detail calculating and planning skill points, but for some reason I decided to wing it on the XP. I just added up all the quests, locations, kills, locks, terminals, mines, and speech challenges that are unavoidable to collect skill points the way I planned, and it puts you at level 9. No way around it. I was just about to declare the question answered, and the answer would have been the lowest level you can get all your skills to 100 is level 9. But then I thought about something we just saw a little bit ago. And that brings me to the good news. There he is. Oh. Ow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Everybody's on fire. Anyway, the raiders in Bethesda, outside and in both office buildings, respawn. So remember this guy with the flamer? He had a copy of the Big Guns book, and when he respawns, there's another one. That means you can theoretically collect an infinite number of Big Guns books. 
so every point we put into big guns when we leveled up could have been put into something else. That was 19 points, but if we had started with lower endurance, it would have been even more. So let's assume that gives us at least 20 extra skill points to play with. If we put 10 in energy weapons, we can forget the energy weapons bobblehead so we don't have to do any of the main quest. Leave Dad in Tranquility Lane and ignore Project Purity. That saves us over 3,000 XP right there. And if we put another 10 in speech and skip Oasis, not only does it mean we save another 300 XP, but we don't have to do any save spamming to pass the speech challenges with McCready or Sapling U. Now, I feel like I need to do a little PSA about cheating here. I didn't explicitly say it when I started this run, but if I was going to cheat, there wouldn't be any point doing this at all. I could just use console commands to give myself perfect stats at level 1. But to me, cheating is using something outside the game to give yourself an advantage in the game. Console commands, mods, editing your save file, that's all disqualified. But I also think there's a difference between cheats and exploits. To me, an exploit is when you gain advantage from a bug or use a feature in the game in a way that the game designers probably didn't intend. And you can make a case that collecting multiple magazines from a respawning character is an exploit, because given the game designer's attempt to place exactly 25 copies of each book in the game, having those characters drop multiple copies is probably a bug. But it's not as egregious as some exploits like using physics glitches to get into locked rooms and stuff like that. Anyway, splitting hairs about cheats versus exploits is definitely getting into a gray area. So if you want to do it with absolutely no funny business, the answer is you can get all skills to 100 by level 9. Absolutely legit. But if you think exploits are fair game, or you don't think the respawning books are even an exploit, then I'm going to give this another shot. And by the way, I didn't mean to imply that mods are inherently cheating. I'll use Quo Vagis as an example because I'm on Belthin's channel and I need to give him a plug once in a while. The reward for one of the quests in that mod is a vintage magazine that gives you, I think, five points to repair and five points to barter, maybe? Pretty balanced in terms of gameplay, comparable to the plus 10 speech you get from Sapling U's Bear Charm. Maybe even underpowered, since, you know, the Quo Vagis quest is a lot more involved and time-consuming than completing Oasis. So, in the context of the game as a whole, there's nothing cheaty about that. But in the context of this challenge run, I would consider picking up any skill points that aren't available in the vanilla game to be cheating. I'd allow skill points from the official DLC, especially since you need broken steel to get all your special stats to 10 and be truly perfect when you hit level 30. But I don't think there's a single skill book in any of them. Plus, they give you a ton of XP, so there's no way you could do them without leveling up past level 8 anyway. All of which means I need to start over at the exit to Vault 101, because I need to slightly respec for this strategy. So I'm going to call it a day, and I'll see you next time.